Hi everybody, this is the last video on the topic of Maxwell distribution and in this particular video I want to talk about an idea or a concept called the mean free path of gas molecules. So in the previous uh, videos we discussed that we can calculate the speed, the average speed or the root mean square speed of a gas particle and we find that the, those speed tends to be really high, right? So we calculated the speed at zero degrees Celsius and we found them to be on the order of about 1500 miles per hour or about uh, 500 uh, meters per second so they're really high speed obviously um, but we know by observation that this is not really uh, true because when we let's say have a gas being released at a specific location um, it takes a lot longer for that same gas to reach uh, another location that covers a certain distance uh, much longer than what you would expect out of the speed that you calculated out of the RMS speed. So for example if you're saying the gas would reach you know would be 1500 uh, miles per hour then basically it would cover half the distance of the United States in, in an hour and that we know is not true so the question is why okay and we can find that out if we go back to that ideal gas simulation that I have been using to kind of illustrate some aspects of the kinetic molecular theory so here's that simulation again and in this particular case I want you to kind of pay special attention to that molecule that's marked red here so what I want to do is I want to turn this thing all called the tracking and what it is is it's going to show you basically how that molecule travels throughout this um, particular uh, container and how uh, it collides with other molecules. Okay, so I'm going to enable tracking and then I'm going to click resume. And what you see is just as I uh, uh, click enable tracking, it shows that the molecule basically goes here earlier and then it hits this part of the container, the plunger, so then it goes this way, hits the wall of the container, and then now it's hitting this way, okay? Now what you can see, of course, is the following. If I keep going through this, you'll see that the molecule hits another one, and you see that it goes, it makes a little bit of a turn here, it goes to this direction, and here so as the molecule keeps going you can see that it's it's the path of the molecule is, is actually quite uh, different because it keeps um, moving you know and then it gets hit gets hit gets hit so there's all this different direction that it's changing okay so what of course to answer the question that we we're asking earlier which is why is it that a gas doesn't reach a particular location faster than it does in reality and the re uh, the reason is of course because there are other gases that are present okay so a gas like this red one here that is not uh, traveling on its own in this container there's a lot of other gases present and the more other gases are present the higher the chances that the gas will hit another gas will collide another gas and therefore change its direction so maybe if the gas is going this way initially it eventually it gets uh, uh, changed its direction to this way and then later on it's this way and then this way so the actual path that the gas travels is before a collision it's actually very short like you can see it's from here to here and then it collides it is from here to here and it collides it's from here to here and it collides okay now what you do is if you were to take all these different paths and you take an average out of them in other words, you're asking the question, how far can a gas particle travel before it hits another gas particle? That's uh, the distance that we refer to as the mean free path. So again, um, what I just said is the mean free path is the average distance travel before a gas particle collides with another molecule. Okay. Now, we find that this distance is pretty short, as it turns out, uh, despite the fact that the speed is very high. It turns out that before a gas particle goes too far, it's already going to hit another particle. So it really doesn't get to go too far with that speed, okay? And that's why we don't really smell a gas right away after its release uh, because it's just you know it would never get to us that quickly because there are a lot of other gas particles that's blocking its way and colliding with it and changing its direction and so on okay so when you uh, plot the 
path of a gas particle like shown here for an oxygen particle right it's just kind of plotting the same way that I showed earlier with that simulation you see that it's sort of like just randomly moving around here and uh, back and forth and the reason for that is because it's being hit it's being kind of hit back and forth with by all these other gas particles that are present there of course it's not being shown right now but that's what's going on okay and this is often called a random walk uh, uh, for a, a particle uh, but the distance that it's actually travel is called a mean free path. Now, for example, for something like helium gas at room temperature in one atmosphere, the mean free path is about 200 nanometers, okay? So that's pretty short distance, right? Uh, it's only, uh, so that corresponds to about 10 to the 10 collisions per second. Every second, basically, the helium gas particle will hit uh, other uh, gas particles about 10 to the 10 times. There's a lot of collisions that's happening every second. Okay, for oxygen, it's a bigger gas, right, than helium. So if you think about it, if it's a bigger gas, what is it? What would likely uh, be the consequence of having a bigger size? Well, if it's a bigger size, that means that it's more likely that before it goes too far, it's going to hit another gas because the bigger you are, the easier it is for you to get into a collision with another gas, right? So oxygen, which is bigger, we would expect to have a shorter mean free path. In other words, before it goes too far, it should hit another gas area. In fact, when you do these kind of calculations, you find that the mean free path for oxygen would be only 60 nanometers. So it's a quite a bit shorter than helium, okay, because of the size factor in this case. So again, why is this an important topic to discuss mean free path, how, how long it takes before a gas collides with another gas? Again, it has to do with reactions eventually because when a reaction happens, the two or three reactant molecules, they have to collide with each other in order for a reaction to happen, in order for some of the chemical bonds to be broken in the existing molecules and for new bonds to be formed, okay? So to know how long it takes before, or how far it takes, I should say in this case, uh, before a collision happened is very useful because then it tells us something about reactivity. It tells us something about how fast a reaction might happen. Okay, so again, this discussion that we started by talking about Maxwell distribution uh, and then you know um, the effect of the temperature and molar mass on distribution as far as and as well as this mean free path idea is really all of it have to do with reactions. Uh, knowing all this information allows us to make some prediction about how fast a reaction might happen.